Welcome to today's webinar, Engage Parents to Support Non-Traditional Careers, an open forum for sharing local outreach strategies, presented by Jeanette Thomas. My name is Greg Nagy, and I am the Virtual Learning Community Manager from The Ohio State University who provides technical support for the STEM Equity Pipeline Project. Before we start the presentation, I would like to go over some housekeeping items for this webinar. This webinar is scheduled to last roughly one hour and is being recorded in order to view this in order to view this presentation in its entirety later. The recorded webinar will be available in the next few days on the stemequitypipeline.org website. As you've already found out, you'll be watching the presenter present slides through Adobe Connect interface while listening to her talk over your computer speakers. All the participant microphones have been automatically muted. You can download slides and other files from the files pod at the bottom left of the Adobe Connect window. Click on the file you want to download, then click the Download Files button. This will open the file as a link in a different tab in your browser. Today we're doing things a little differently than previous. So today the facilitator of this open forum can hear your comments or take your questions after the introductions. There are two ways to share information during this webinar. You can raise your hand so the facilitator can call on you to speak. When called on, your microphone will be unmuted so the group can hear your comments. Also, at any time during the presentation, you may submit a comment or question by typing in the chat pod at the bottom of your Adobe Connect window. You do not need to raise your hand for this. We can read and respond to comments or questions throughout the time allocated for participants to share successful strategies and ideas to educate or engage parents to support non-traditional careers. I'd like to start the webinar by introducing Freda Walker, consultant for the STEM Equity Pipeline Project. Freda? Good afternoon, and welcome to the fifth webinar in this series, Non-Traditional Pathways. These webinars highlight program strategies that have worked and ones that you can implement. The support for the webinar series is from the Minnesota Department of Education and the Minnesota State Colleges and Universities. They funded these webinars to inform all who have a role in helping students understand successful pathways to high skill, high wage, and high demand jobs. On their behalf, I welcome each of you and our facilitator, Jeanette Thomas. Additional funding is from NAEP, the National Alliance for Partnerships and Equity, and the National Science Foundation. We'd like to start first by finding out how you heard about this webinar. Uh, this poll, you can see there are a variety of answers, and if you answer where it has a red chat, please uh, chat in the chat function so that we'll learn a little bit more about how you found out about the webinar. Okay, let's start the poll. Let me, uh, I forgot to clear out the previous, oh, previous answers. The there we go. Okay, now I'm going to open it right now. Okay, the poll is open now. Okay, I think now we can broadcast the results. Uh, you can see that most of us know about this through the STEM Equity Pipeline email listserv. Uh, a few from another listserv and some from colleagues. Uh, we always seem to have a lot of um, networking that happens and we appreciate that. Uh, some in the pipeline uh, press. <coughs> and if you uh, could chat for us, uh, about those of you who received it from a colleague or if you received it from a listserv, I'd be interested in knowing about that. Okay, we'll go to the next slide. Oops, did we do that one? Yes, okay. Um, just a reminder that all of these, the webinars are archived on the stemequitypipeline.org website. Also, we provide certificates of completion if that is of benefit to you. And at the very end of the webinar, when you fill out your evaluation form, there will be a place to fill out um, information for a certificate of completion. We have a resource document, and today we have our uh, PowerPoint that was uh, down in the file section that you can download if you. Uh, just highlight it and download, then you can have that on your desktop and for later use. Also, we will have, I will upload a resource document towards the end of the webinar that you can download. 
Um, I just wanted to remind you that uh, today our format is a little bit different. We haven't tried this before, but we appreciate everyone who signed up. And um, you can chat in the chat function by uh, submitting your own comments or your own strategies. You can raise your hand, and to raise your hand, you look across the top menu section, you'll see a little person with their hand raised. And if you click on that, I'm going to show you, I'm going to click on mine, and I raise my hand, and it shows that my hand is raised. That's an indicator to the facilitator that she can call on you. I can also go in and lower my hand if I decided I don't want my hand raised. Um, you can uh, also, uh, type in questions uh, or comments into the chat function. I'd like to know who's participating on the webinar today. So let's run another poll and just see who's here. Greg, if you'll post it. Okay, so if you can be answering, and I see that I have a hand that has come up, so and it went down. Okay. Okay, I think that we're getting pretty close. I'm getting ready to broadcast, so take a second more if you haven't answered. And be sure and chat if you're one of the answers there that has a chat function. Uh, as you can see, uh, we're sort of distributed between uh, school or college administrators and counselors and uh, student services staff. We do have um, state agency staff and then some CTE directors or coordinators. If you could please, those of you, particularly those of you in the other section, if you could tell me uh, your agency or uh, why you joined the webinar, I would appreciate that information. And I can see that multiple people are typing, so thank you. Another poll I'd like to know is if there's someone else watching with you. Um, you can see the various answers there. Uh, it just helps us have a more accurate count of who's participating. So Greg, let's post the poll. Okay, looks like that we have um, mostly people watching by themselves, but we have one other person with someone and one person <coughs> with two other people. So thank you. Uh, I apologize. Um, I'm sorry about the phone. I had not disconnected it. So let's go to the next slide. Greg, yeah, OK. Thank you. I, this is a poll I'd like to just ask. How many of you plan to share at least one strategy with us today? You can say yes, maybe, or you don't know. You just want to listen and learn. I'm sorry, I didn't get this poll up. Oh, you didn't get this poll up. OK, well, if you would just type in there, type in the, um, uh, in the chat function and let me know if, we, uh, if you plan to share. So that way I'll know that, uh, what's happening. Oh, I can see someone maybe, some knows, maybe. Listen and learn, maybe. OK, maybe. I have multiple people typing. Okay, well, we'll appreciate any, if the, those of you that said maybe, uh, maybe some of the conversation ahead of, that we have will stimulate your interest in sharing. Um, I'm going to introduce Jeanette Thomas now. Jeanette is from uh, Iowa, and she is going to facilitate the discussion. But to facilitate, she's going to start off by giving some information about the topics that we might be talking about. Uh, together and thank you for joining us. Jeanette, you're on. Okay, great. Thank you, Freda. Uh, thank you for the opportunity for me to serve as moderator today in this new format um, and also to serve as your guinea pig, I guess. So this will either go very, very well or very, very well, we hope. 
Uh, let's get started. I just got a couple slides that I want to review so that uh, you'll have some things that you'll be listening for today and also uh, some expectations in terms of um, our two presenters today in terms of what they'll be covering. Um, first, I want you to listen for information about informative materials, whether that be marketing materials, uh, such as a parent's guide, self-assessments, any type of brochures, are there particular exercises, uh, parental involvement exercises that um, will be discussed today. Also, non-traditional career facts and sheets. Uh, what kind of tools or how do you communicate to parents about uh, those high-wage, high-skill jobs in the non-traditional careers area? How do you talk about or educate them on the changing workforce? And in particular, the earnings potential for non-traditional careers. Uh, parental influence on career planning. Uh, why is parental involvement important in the first place? Um, explaining how uh, parents make a difference in career planning for their teens. Uh, do you use a checklist for planning uh, family involvement when it comes to uh, career planning and educating parents on non-traditional as well as STEM career opportunities? And of course, we want to listen for and share any types of barriers to parental involvement. What are some of those barriers? And what are uh, some of the resources or strategies that were utilized to address those barriers? In equity, diversity, activities, resources, or websites, uh, were there any sort of multicultural approaches or activities, tools that were used in uh, parental involvement programs? Let me click on to the next slide here. Um, when listening to our contributors, um, or our presenters, they will be giving us just an overall a history of their program. They'll talk about strategies that they um, implemented as well as uh, particular activities. And again, they'll be looking at successes and challenges that they faced within their program. Um, we want to know how they evaluated their program. How did they get feedback from the parents, um, other stakeholders with, that participated in their program? Um, and again, looking at any resources that they may have or that they want to share, and also recommendations. What recommendations would they give to any of the participants on the webinar today if they're new to this area um, or if they're looking at implementing some of their strategies? Uh, mostly, we really want to look at um, some participation from everyone that's involved today to do some sharing so that we can learn from each other and uh, build on the successes of our programs. With that, I'm going to introduce our first participant uh, who will be presenting today. Um, I'd like to introduce you to Maine Linford. She's a project manager for Schools to the Careers program at Chester County Intermediate Unit in Downington, Pennsylvania. I'm interested to uh, hear the input from Maine. So Maine, I will stop my webcam and turn it over to you. Well, thank you, Jeanette, and um, good afternoon, everyone. I work in southeastern Pennsylvania, where I manage school to careers programs for a large regional education agency called the Chester County Intermediate Unit. This project that involved engaging parents of potential female students in STEM was in 2001. I had been assigned to support a technology industry group led by a successful woman entrepreneur who had co-founded a growing IT company. She had noted the general lack of women in IT and suggested that we do something uh, to encourage girls to study computer science. Maine? Our very, yes. I'm sorry, this yes. is Greg. I, I can hear you fine, but uh, if, if you haven't, could you turn on your webcam for us? Sorry, I go. thought I had. Thank you. Hi. A big smile to everybody. Thank you. So, what we decided to do was have an event. Our very first Girls Exploring Tomorrow's Technology event attracted 50 girls and 30 parents, and that was in 2001. Even without the benefit of research literature, we knew from our own career experiences that role models and parent engagement were important. So there were sessions for girls and parents, and a tradition was 
established. Our annual event, which we refer to simply as GET, G-E-T-T, -T, has had a dedicated parent track every year since. While the girls are off having fun at hands-on activities led by female role models, the adults have spent Q&A time with our keynote speakers, or heard from speakers, other speakers about STEM careers, financing college, or resources at the county library system, to name a few topics. Over the past three years, parents also met, via Skype, a GET alumna who is majoring in engineering at Case Western Reserve University. Claudia Morell was an early GET parent presenter, with the connection being Claudia's Computer Mania event in Maryland. And for those of you who are signed on from Maryland, you probably know about Computer Mania. This year, Elizabeth Tran from NAEP spoke to the parents about the Million Women Mentors Initiative. And you might wonder how uh, we manage the NAEP connection. The national headquarters is located conveniently nearby. I'd like to briefly highlight the collaboration of the Westchester, Chester County branch of the AAUW. And my friend uh, Mary Smith, I know, was signed on. So hello, Mary, and I'm, I'm glad you were able to make it today. They have always served as volunteers, but last year took on a more active role with the parents by conducting a more expansive feedback survey. No surprise, really, that parents asked for more information and resources to support their daughters in STEM exploration. AWW responded quickly with a resource website. After receiving a community grant, they extended their parent outreach, which they've named Parents and Educators Exploring Tomorrow's Technology, or PET, P-E-T-T. -T. In addition to supporting GET, they set up a parent information display during an open house at the Technical College High School Pennix Bridge Campus, one of the three career and technical education schools where I am the Perkins manager. For those of you who work in CTE, I think you can see the obvious connections of this collaboration to the Perkins non-trad performance indicators. GET has grown over the years, and last month we welcomed 390 girls, 85 parents, and 18 educators. AAUW conducted a second survey of GET parents, and here are a couple of the findings. 94% of the 77 respondents did not believe that boys are better than girls in science and math. But 74% did believe that other people think that boys are better than girls in science and math. 92% stated that their daughters have expressed an interest in STEM, good news. And as expected, the parents act, asked for more help in supporting their daughters along those lines all year long, not just at our event. You will find GET, PET, and the Technical College High School in the National Girls Collaborative Project Pennsylvania Directory. You will also find the Chester County Intermediate Unit page on the NAEP website, including information about a parent non-trad engagement event we held called Focus Your Future Outside the Box, Think Outside the Box, which we adapted from a Project Lead the Way model that you might be familiar with. What we have found over the years is that engaging parents is a matter of meeting them in the places where they gather and providing them with relevant information about non-traditional STEM careers. Thanks for inviting me to speak, Freda and Jeanette. Thank you, uh, Maggie. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to uh, add a little something, and that is uh, that if you look down in the chat function, uh, Mary Smith has given us a link Good job. And I went to this link, yes, um, last uh, a few days ago when I found out about it, and it has lots of good information resources. And I don't know, Mary, would you like to um, chime in and say something? Let's see if Mary. Uh, she's typing. She's typing. Okay, we'll see what she has. Oh, I don't have a speaker set up. Uh, Mary, we can try it through your computer. If you can hear us, we might be able to hear you. So, um, uh, Greg, let's unmute Mary's uh, uh, 
microphone. Let's just see if we can hear her. This is an experiment. And, and while you're doing that, uh, Mary just returned from the state AAUW conference in Gettysburg, where she uh, presented on this very same topic. OK, Fred, I turned on her okay. microphone. If she has one, she'll be able to click the microphone icon at the top and try to speak. But she may not have a microphone, depending on her computer. OK, so Mary, just look across the top, the black where the microphone is, and see if you can say uh, connect my microphone. And everyone else that's listening, if you want to speak, this is what we have to do. Um, you can connect your microphone and see if it'll work. So Mary? Hmm. We'll just give her a second to see if it's going to work. OK, Mary's typing. Well, this is part of what an open forum is about, <laughs> taking time to get people on. <laughs> I hit the mic, but maybe it's the volume, Greg. OK, thanks, Mary. We appreciate it. And if you can get on um, there, uh, we'd love to hear from you. So Jeanette, let's go ahead with our next okay. uh, uh, participant. Okay. And maybe Greg uh, can be typing and um, okay. Mary figure that out. OK. I really want to thank Mary. I really want to thank Maine for her input. What a great way to hit all of those areas that um, I discussed earlier. That was great. Thank you. Um, our next speaker is Anita Brown Lee. She's a community liaison for the Office of Career and Technical Education at Howard County Public School System in Elliott City, Maryland. Anita, I will turn it over to you. OK, thank you. Can you hear me? Just testing. Yes. I can hear you. Okay. Uh, my video has not come up yet, so. Well, I'm going to go ahead and begin. Uh, my name is Anita Brownlee, and I'm the community liaison responsible for community outreach for our career and technology education program. I need to let you know that I first began the journey with creating a brand new marketing campaign and community outreach through the support of the Perkins Grant as well as working with NAEP, uh, beginning with our Perkins and looking at our non-traditional enrollment. We have found that Anita, we were... this is Anita, this is Freda. Can you look over on the right hand side where it says video and it says start my uh, share my webcam? You actually have to share it. So let's see if we can do that. I think that's it. You see there now? you go. Thank you so Hi. much. Yes. Hi Anita. Hi, thank you. Um, at this point, we, I was at a Maryland State Department education meeting, and they shared a document talking about the great work that NAEP uh, does in addressing nontraditional strategies, uh, including the enrollment, retention, and completion of students. The Office of Career and Education um, at a, in our facility had decided that we needed to embark on this journey because we, as, as well as everyone else, had not been hitting our percentage. So we had a chance to look first at our data, and that started with all staff that is involved with career and technology education. Uh, we worked with Mimi Luckin, as well as Claudia Morrell, and we had an opportunity to look at data as well as participate in a micro-messaging seminar. That was an eye-opening experience for our teachers uh, in the way that we delivered instruction. We looked at our curriculum. We also looked at the materials and resources we provided for students. What we learned is that we were doing a great job of what we were doing, but we needed to enhance opportunities for students all across the culture, all across the socioeconomic uh, levels that they're at, students with disabilities, and any other students with special needs. Uh, at that point, we started marketing materials that remained more inclusive instead of exclusive. Uh, one of the strategies that really worked well for us 
was to translate our documents into different languages within our community in order to complete our outreach. We also provided interpreters when we did community outreach with parents and students. We have a carnival open house that we have every year to highlight for our students and parents and the community the different activities that go on within the career and technology education, including highlights of competition, skills students have learned, our post-secondary partners are there to help us speak and share information. Uh, we also offer certifications that we highlight, articulated agreements, open houses, and the list is on and on. Um, I also sit on community outreach um, activities and boards that are in our local community with uh, leaders of industry uh, within automotive, biotechnology, visual communication, all the career and technology education programs. Uh, one of the barriers that we have uh, really worked on uh, that really had held us back was we have a community that is very diverse but very large in degrees and did not see the actual need and the purpose and the reason why their child should be enrolled in our program. So we really worked on looked on opportunities, use, use, utilizing the uh, documents that NAEP has provided, looking at intrinsic, extrinsic reasons for students, students picking careers, um, building support systems for our females who are in traditional male programs, as well as uh, support for our males who are in traditionally female-oriented programs. Uh, we also have opportunities to highlight and make videos of our students in various uh, facilities and competitions, at work, at internships. Uh, we also offered opportunities for those to be highlighted in school newsletters. Um, we have videos, as I said, we've created for each and every program that are highlighted on our school website. We also have opportunities to go into middle schools and recruit students in what we have a reading program. So I go out and I speak and recruit, and it's a challenge sometimes creating, speaking to 800 students, but we segment them and we answer their questions. We also go to PTSAs. So we've done a host of different types of uh, marketing strategies and enrollment strategies, and we have seen a percentage increase is small, but we're increasing to meet our percentage that the state has mandated. And we are constantly evolving and constantly looking at what we're doing and how we present. And that hopefully is a brief overview of how we work in Howard County and how we're continuing to reach the next level and strive forward with making our educational opportunities inclusive as a graduation pathway. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. That was a lot of information in a short amount of time. I appreciate that. <laughs> and you know, when you're passionate about NAEP and you're passionate about career and technology education, you do the best you can to squeeze it all in in a little bit of time. So thank you. I agree. I agree. Now we're at the point where we can start uh, sharing, asking questions, um, and raising your hand. So if we have any questions, um, if you want to go ahead and raise your hand, or if you want to go ahead and start typing questions into the chat area. I see that Mary is, is typing something. Um, but let me start out with just um, a question for both of our presenters. And either of you can just chime in um, to answer this first question. It deals with technology and your parental involvement activities. Were there any, any types of activities um, where you utilize technologies, whether it's in a format like this via a webinar or uh, through emails or just how, if any way, did you integrate technology into your activities? Uh, yes, I can start with that. Um, I did mention that um, we have a young, young lady who had attended uh, three or four different GET events and she has been a guest speaker for the last three years as, as an engineering student. We bring her in uh, from Cleveland via Skype. So all of the parents sitting in the, uh, in the auditorium uh, uh, of the school where we meet in um, get to interact with her. And her mother is in the room with us, but it's just uh, too far to, uh, 
to have her travel back for, for the weekend uh, from, from Cleveland. So we've made active use of Skype. Uh, one year we brought in a, a, um, a guest speaker, a role model, from Houston. And it was a, a, a different type of uh, sharing technology. I'm sorry, I don't remember the, uh, the name. But um, that was a wonderful way for everyone to meet a, uh, a role model from very far away. OK. Um, Great. Thank you, Mame. I thought that was really good. Um, I wanted to share that in Howard County, what we have done is we have connected our technology with our post-secondary partners in order for students to be able to connect with other professionals, other students who are, out, who are enrolled in those programs. So they have a chance to collaborate on projects that they are working with. We've also simply added in, which was something we didn't think about ahead of time, um, uh, businesses that would like to be involved. So if we have a special type of a seminar going on, we do invite anyone to be able to participate and to be able to connect so that students can envision themselves going to the next level. The other thing we have, which is not interactive, but we have a website that is available for people right. to communicate back and forth with us. And we also have opportunities for newsletters that go out technically to all the community. It doesn't matter if it's business, state representatives, or whatever, to here are our messages that we're sending out. If we have any needs, we express the needs we have for possibly looking for other types of internships. Um, and we also have the dual enrollment opportunities, which are for students also who may not have transportation to do internships where we connect with them through the technology piece. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, again, I encourage our participants to type in questions in the chat area or to raise your hand if you have questions for our presenters. I did want to ask along those same lines of technology, are there any types of hands-on activities um, that you all utilize to get parents involved, to try, in a sense, hook those parents into um, piquing their interest in some of these careers? Um, I would like to begin with that. Uh, when we have our open houses, it used to start with an informational piece and then let the students see the students at work. But what we found was the carnival piece that we're doing now is basically opening up our whole building to all the community. And the students are able to participate in different types of activities that highlight the technology that they use, the skills that they've learned as well as the knowledge that they have gained. So we have something called an intergenerational activity where our senior citizens come in with family members and we teach them about using the internet. They make uh, greeting cards. They learn how to be able to Skype and things like that because they really are not uh, well versed and concerned about how they can reach family members when we had the big snow in. Okay, it looks like we got a little bit of a delay. Um, so that has worked out really well. Um, the other thing that we have is we have student competition. So when the students compete, we actually have the students repeat the dishes they have made, um, say, in our hotel restaurant management program. In our bi biotechnology, students will demonstrate splitting the DNA between uh, a plant and a jellyfish, so the veins in the plant will glow. So we have students doing different types of activities. They're creating commercials and visual communications. So we use technology in a various means of ways, not just through instruction. It's also through highlighting to the parents. The other thing we've done is we've really highlighted, and we've done it in a technology capturing way, the actual career ladder regarding the money that students will be making, we talk about them wanting their students to live away from home and still have an opportunity to live the lifestyle they want without a parent supplementing their income. We also talk to them about, through this, um, the cap of where a student can reach and what they could do above and beyond with having the opportunity of exploring a career, learning technical skills, and completing the certification program as well as the college program. Specifically, thank you, Anita. And uh, specifically with regard to uh, reaching out 
to parents, just don't overlook the, uh, the, uh, the easy button that is email. Uh, mm -hmm. my, friends, my friends at uh, AAUW um, in, in, on their pet uh, website have um, pushed out information about my summer camps. I provide middle school um, exploration uh, camps uh, with uh, specifically in, in STEM and career and technical education and a, a couple of those have been uh, girl specific. So to put that uh, out there uh, by their um, distribution list has been very uh, helpful. It just uh, helps get the information out. Okay, great. Um, looks like Mary Smith has added a comment. Um, she's stating that they're going to be at the Chester County Library Mini Maker Fair in May and be making straw rockets with the attendees. This is a family day so parents can be involved as well. That's a very interesting um, idea and, and a way to expose parents to some of those non-traditional careers. Um, let me ask one particular question of the presenters about multiculturalism. Are there any cultural implications that have helped or hindered your parental involvement efforts? Uh, I can go ahead and go ahead. speak on that. Go I'm ahead. sorry, Maine. Uh, no, um, I, have, I have an example. Oh, okay. We, when we started our marketing campaign, we did hit a few barriers that are there. Um, uh, Howard County is a lot more urban than it, what it has been. And we had some uh, organizations that worried that we were tracking students. Uh, we had mm -hmm. some organizations who did not traditionally want their females to be in in type of STEM career. Um, and it was a challenge in order to meet the need. Uh, what we had to do was present in a different manner of showing opportunities that are there that would not interfere with their cultural beliefs or their social beliefs and would offer opportunities for the ladies or gentlemen to be able to move forward. Um, what we had to do was prove ourselves and we could show data that we have been collecting over time that shows that students in these careers were still successful but still be able to operate within their culture that they were brought up in without uh, ourselves being, in, you know, in, I would say, offensive uh, to anyone. And the students we've adjusted to. Uh, we have some students who, through their culture, will not be able to sit beside a gentleman in class. We've adjusted with that. Um, and we've looked at careers that will fit into the culture that will be accepted. And those students have been successful. Thank you, Anita. Maine? Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Southern Chester County, which borders on both Delaware and uh, Maryland, has a significant population of his, uh, Hispanic uh, uh, folks. And many of them are in, engaged in the uh, migrant uh, uh, occupations. So we have a number of uh, his, uh, Spanish-speaking students at our southern um, campus that I mentioned at the Technical College High School. Uh, when uh, AAUW visited our, our open, open house in December, we asked uh, that their uh, handouts, and they were uh, very interested in doing this, be translated into Spanish, of course, so that uh, both uh, English-speaking and Spanish-speaking uh, parents uh, coming through the school could benefit from the, uh, the handouts that you'll find on the uh, uh, website that, that Mary posted um, under, under, com under the chat comments. Also, uh, that area of our, our county, uh, we had to specifically reach out uh, to them um, for the GET event for the Girls Exploring Tomorrow's Technology because the event is held in northern Chester County and we wanted to make sure that our Latina girls were able to get to the event. Uh, pun intended. Okay. Um, get to the GET. Uh, so uh, for the last couple of years the e Economic Development Council has been paying for uh, a, a bus and uh, Mary, perhaps you can correct me, maybe uh, part of your grant paid for that uh, this year. I'm, I'm I'm not sure, but through uh, through uh, government uh, uh, some subsidies, and uh, that I think that might be the um, industry partnership money originally, or some donations. Um, 
uh, paid for buses to get those girls. We found a uh, champion, the ESL specialist at our school, um, organized a, a quite a number of girls to get them to the event to expand their uh, horizons. Unfortunately, we don't get to, um, as the girls uh, get to come, we don't always get the parents riding the bus too. So we're uh, not always uh, able to influence and impact uh, those parents. And what did Mary just say? Um, yes, our grant did pay for that bus uh, this year with uh, 34 girls and their uh, and their educators. So um, those are some Great. particular uh, challenges that that we found mm -hmm. ways to meet. And that's an excellent example of collaborative community efforts too, in being involved with uh, with non-traditional career recruitment and retention when it comes to the, those other outside funding streams. Because uh, we know that a lot of times these activities are started with maybe small grants, but the sustainability piece is very key. So it's interesting and exciting to hear about these collaborative efforts that you have in the community. Um, let me ask one more question about um, just your programs themselves in, in, in evaluation part in terms of have you seen any trends where you've identified any key influence of students, uh, particularly in non-trad careers where, uh, for example, parents are more involved in their career decision making than teachers, or counselors have more of an influence? What kind of trends are you seeing in that area? Well, the uh the uh, surveys and evaluations that, that we have done, and uh, as I mentioned, not necessarily through GET, uh, because we do an evaluation um, every year, and as a matter of fact, um, had um, uh, a, a, NAEP, a, a different NAEP consultant uh, redesign our, our student feedback form um, this year for GET. But uh, back to uh, our, our career and technical centers, uh, what we have found is that uh, Counselors are, are uh, highly influential. Of course, parents are, are just at the top of that heap. Um, um, so we have, uh, as we did our root cause uh, analysis, Anita, as, as did uh, as, as you folks uh, did by following the uh, STEM equity pipeline process, we found that we needed to engage parents, that we needed to engage counselors um, in particular. Okay. Thank you. Nina, is there anything um, you wanted to add on that topic? County, uh, yes. Um, in, in Howard County, the one thing that we have found that had become a challenge um, was our guidance counselors were not as well versed in CTE or career and technology education as we would have liked them to be. So we host every year uh, for new guidance counselors and anyone who wants a refresher an opportunity to tour our facility, uh, to meet with us, to have a Q&A, and we, do, we call it our lunch and eat, and we provide a tour. Uh, the other thing that we have found is our advisories we have for every single program has enabled other parents, students, industry leaders in order to come in and present the things they feel that we need and help us evaluate our program. We do complete a student parent survey at the end of each year um, and we also have the opportunity to gain feedback on things that we need to improve on and ways to for us to continue to be more inclusive um, and meet the needs of the students as well as the parents. Uh, the other thing that we have that I think is fantastic is we have an oversight committee that is available for parents um, to look at the way we, we market and we're meeting the needs of our local industry members. Um, for example, we have opportunities for parents to be able to host different types of activities that they would like to have. Um, just to share also and piggyback off what Mame just said, uh, we have uh, highlighted activities in each and every library throughout the county and that has really worked out really well. Um, so we have a, addressed the challenges that we have, and we are now building a very nice, and I call it our pipeline, to success for our students. Good. Great. 
Looks like Mary is typing again, and, and when she finishes that, I will address her input. But I have one final question that I'd like to ask of you, uh, ask of both of you, and that is, what advice would you give to someone that's just coming into this? Um, they've gotten a new grant, and parental involvement is a big piece of it. What advice would you give them going forward in terms of developing their own program? Uh, I, I think the way to go is the way that uh, Anita and uh, our organization ha have gone, um, that you, you need to follow a process to, uh, to identify root causes and, and strategies. Uh, uh, in the early days of Perkins, uh, we were doing this and we were doing that and uh, uh, one thing after another that weren't necessarily connected until we engaged in a, uh, a very purposeful study of our root causes and looking at our data. So um, I have advised other people in Pennsylvania to follow the NAEP uh, process. I find it to be very effective and uh, very illuminating in terms of, oh, we really hadn't thought of that before because we hadn't looked at the data that way before. So um, I, would, I would recommend uh, to everyone that the uh, the NAEP process is is really very effective and it does uh, help you zero in on on areas that that uh, and strategies I mean go back to the root causes and strategies uh, document that's listed on the NAEP website and you don't have to reinvent that wheel there's all kinds of great um, great uh, suggestions here what have you found Anita thank you ma'am. Well, thank you I totally agree with you, Mame. I think the things that you all are doing is also absolutely wonderful. I think that as you, you go on to the journey to make sure that you're addressing um, the challenges that the TE may have in your community and the recruitment, retention, and enrollment for non-traditional students, please know that that journey can have those challenges that sometimes you shake your head and you just might want to say, wow, where do we go from here? But through the support of Nate, and because of us keeping our eye on the prize, we have been able to meet those challenges. And what we do most of all is our best marketing piece are our students. And when they're excited and they bring their kids in, their friends in, and they are looking at the activities they're doing and they feel like they belong and they're included and they can see themselves, and we are there supporting them, and the parents see this, and a parent says to you, my, my student only survived because of your program, those are the rewards that come in, and sometimes they're slow coming, but they're still coming. And that's the inspiration that you get to move forward and help every student have a door open to help them walk through. And unfortunately, sometimes we can't have all of them walk through, but as the word gets out, we are getting the fruits of our labor. Just We're just watching them grow. And we're looking at our, kid, our students bloom and parents who are very happy, who never saw this as a possibility before, that are saying, maybe it will work for not only my child, but for someone else. And they're promoting for us, too. Agree with that. Thank you, Mae. And I think it's, uh, it's really those worker bees uh, like you and Mame that are, are, are in these positions, you, your passion for what you do clearly shows, and I really, really appreciate it. And I'm sure that NAEP uh, appreciates it, too, as being members of their organization. Uh, Mary's got a couple of comments on here that I'd like to read. Um, she states that out of 85 parents of uh, the GET, 66% uh, state STEM as their daughter's favorite subject. 61% said GET was their daughter's first STEM experience outside school. And 58% stated their daughter did not participate in school STEM activities. Um, looks like a... Oh, I'm sorry. Also, 57% of parents stated they were not aware of methods and activities to support their daughter's interest in STEM. That is why we felt supporting parents was the best way we could help the STEM careers um, getting girls involved. We want to keep PET going, either, either a one-year grant, oh, uh, 
after the grant is up in July. I think is what is is what she's trying to say here. So I mean that's a testament as well to we've made great strides, but we still have a, a long way to go. Now um, I'm going to give about I don't know just a few seconds to see if there's any more questions from the audience. Freda, I'm not sure if you wanted to add anything. Yes. Well, I just wanted to say that I can't uh, say that I have anything to do with this program, but in our county, which is very rural and very isolated, our largest elementary school now is doing um, evening events that are focused on STEM, and uh, students come with their parents, and every teacher, no matter what uh, subject that they teach or what grade level that they teach, they do a STEM activity that's hands-on, and the parents and the students do something uh, you know, and it's after school hours in the evening when more parents could show up. And um, anyway, and then they advertise that in the newspaper, and so that's actually starting some of that career uh, awareness and parent support early on in elementary school, and it's uh, then supported by the other uh, educational institutes that are here in our county. So I just wanted to share that one piece. And also, one of the things I wondered about, this is not about sharing, but I noticed that Mary... Uh, indicated in one of her chats that they had a second bus that was available for parents but they did not get many takers and I wondered if some people might be willing to uh, chat and say just uh, identify some of the challenges that they have in relation to engaging parents and uh, they can chat you know put those in in the chat or they could raise their hand if they're willing to share that and maybe some of uh, other people might have some solutions for them Thank you, Jeanette. It's yours again. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Freda. Sure. Uh, Jessica has a question about industry partnerships. How do you get the industry partnerships, especially for financial support, um, such as you said, Economic Development Council helps with funding. So how did you how did you two um, engage uh, those industry partnerships? The uh, Get Event is a youth activity under a, a workforce investment board industry partnership called the Innovative Technology Action Group. Um, I've been around since it started. I, I mentioned the, the woman that was the uh, our inspiration and, and uh, founder of our GET event. Uh, that has since evolved into a very active um, uh, industry partnership officially. And it used to get uh, 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 WIA funds, uh, Workforce Investment Act. But now uh, there's an outreach to partnership members. Uh, the largest employer in our county, for example, is uh, Vanguard Financial Services. And um, they and other um, uh, corporations have uh, donated thousands of dollars uh, to support uh, the GET event. It's just a matter of, of reaching out. So we already had a, a, we already have a platform to reach out. And we uh, we also partner with the other industry partnerships that are that um, I think there are four or five of them here in in Chester County. So uh, we partner with them uh, also. Uh, some of our uh, donors have benefited from the uh, EITC, the tax credit um, donations, and uh, that's been very effective too. In Howard County. Uh, we have had an opportunity to partner with some of our large industry leaders, such as Honeywell, Lockheed Martin, to name a few. But what we do is we have a representative from our office that sits on the Workforce um, Act in order for us to understand <laughs> uh, personnel. So what we have done is we have started to get them involved, and it's worked really well with just student supporting student competitions. And when they see the fruits of their labor come in with students winning the Skills USA competitions and the robotics uh, competitions and moving forward, they're seeing that their investment is working and it's just now starting to branch out to include other students who would normally not have a chance to uh, participate. Um, our Rotary Club is very strong in giving us support, right. making students yes. can go to camps and things like that. We have small industry that is willing to pay our students, um, helping them through college. So we've tapped into a lot more of diverse financial support 
Uh, but we usually start with our Workforce uh, Investment Act in order so, so we can find out where the need is within our local community and nationally in order to prepare students for those careers. Thank you. And I've also put a, a link to a center that's local here in my area in Des Moines, Iowa. And it's a perfect example of those collaborative partnerships. It was a center for working families that was um, brought together through our community uh, foundation of Greater Des Moines, United Way, and Des Moines Area Community College. So I encourage you to take a look at that to uh, see the services that they have to offer and how they came around that whole economic development piece to look at programming to, um, to increase our local workforce as well. Uh, Patty Childress has a question. What does GET stand for? Girls Exploring Tomorrow's Technology. Okay, great. And Mary also put another comment in, AAW has grants available as well as the National Growth Collaborative Project. So I encourage you all to take a look at that um, if you're interested in uh, some funding. OK. Not seeing any more questions for the group. It looks like we're getting down to the wire here. Fred, I'm going to turn it back over to you in case there's some more uh, housekeeping that we have to deal with before we end. But I did want to thank Mame and Anita for your input. It's been invaluable today, and I learned a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Anita. Nice to meet you, too, Mame. Freda, you're still muted. Still muted. Now can you hear me? Now I can hear you. OK, thank you. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to Jeanette for facilitating and moderating this session today. I uh, particularly am pleased that Mame and Anita were on because I want you to know that they had not prepped to give a presentation. They had just prepped to share uh, three to five minutes. And um, anyway, so I do thank you all for sharing so much, and Jeanette for having such excellent guiding questions to engage uh, a different conversation than just the uh, different points that we were going to cover. Uh, I also want to thank the Minnesota Department of Education and the Minnesota State Colleges and Universities, NAEP, and the National Science Foundation. Uh, I don't have a slide on this next one, but I just want to ask people um, about we had hoped that this would be like an open forum. And we did have a little bit of chatting, but we didn't really have an open forum. So is this a format that you think we should continue to explore and try to engage people in an open format, uh, an open forum? Or do you just like having presentations better? If you could chat in the bottom, I would appreciate your insight on that. Uh, Oh, I can see people are beginning to chat, so that's, that'll help me know a little bit more about our experiment today on having an open forum. Fred, I do see there's a question there about sharing resources. Is there a way to upload a resources? Yes, yes thank you. Uh, Glenda, if you have a resource, uh, I, we would love to have it. If you look over under the file section, down at the very bottom, it will say upload file. If you click on up Upload File, it will give you an option to browse your computer. You can browse your computer, and then you can upload, just hit uh, Open, and it will put it into that file section. And then we can um, you know, uh, see the things that you might want to share with us. Uh, you might also um, um, tell us what it is, if you would, Glenda, what you're going to upload, so we'll know what to be looking for in the chat function, if you tell us that. OK, I can see that some people are saying it was a good format. Oh, she doesn't have one to upload. But if you want to, OK, well, if you don't have one to upload, if you want to download the files on the left-hand side, just hit the highlight one of them and download. Jeanette actually put together a um, non-traditional webinar resource list and has a few um, resources and links. It also has the AUW link on there. It has the contact information for the for Jeanette and for Mame and for Anita if you had additional questions or wanted to uh, contact them. Um, the variety is great, great format, way to have a webinar. <laughs> How do I get you all to participate in the webinar, though? <laughs> um, okay. It doesn't okay. matter. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Um, 
people are sharing through the chat, and I do appreciate that. Let's see. I've got, Jeanette, you've got, oh, here's something, somebody, oh, wonderful. Somebody has given us a PDF, a Latino parental involvement. Excellent. Oh, baby. Wonderful. Yeah. Great. Yes, that I is fabulous. I'm, I'm going to go right over there, highlight it right now. I'm highlighting it. And I'm going to download that file onto my computer. Save to my computer, it says. I said, yes, click to download. And there it goes. It's coming in. So, um, I, oh, you, OK, uh, let's see. Was, oh, they did. OK, uh, Glenda uploaded for us. Thank you. OK, Jessica has a question for you, Mame. How, how long has your GET program been operating? Since 2001. I, I'm sorry. my. Um, video went away. I'm busy downloading. <laughs> I can't forget to I'll be doing the same. <laughs> right. Um, Since yes, 2001, OK. 2001, when we went, where, you know, we um, just had a two-hour event in the evening. And uh, do you remember Take Your Daughters to Work Day? Well, sure. that year, we, we connected to Take Your Daughters to Work Day. And we're just really pleasantly surprised after we put the word out around the county to have 50 girls and, and, and 30 or so parents that first year. So um, Great. We, we, we've had a, a, a core group of, of women over the years who just, uh, for them, it's a labor of love because it's a lot of work to put that event on. Wonderful. And it looks like Glenda has yeah. identified the source for her um, Latina parental involvement. PDF file. It's from the Career Equity Resource Center at Rutgers University. Yes, and you can see that Mary, if you want to communicate with Mary, who we couldn't get her, um, uh, get a microphone to go uh, to work for Mary, but you can see that she would be glad to um, communicate with you. So she's put a, uh, something up where you can email her. Great. Well, I'm going to keep going forward then. If we see anything else come up, you all let me know. Uh, I just want to encourage everyone to join and view our virtual learning community and the archived webinars. They're at www.stemequitypipeline.org. Uh, I also want to thank everyone who participated with us today in this series. I uh, enjoyed it also. And we look forward to your participation in future webinars. This series is finished, but we do have a, a webinar in May that is being sponsored by NAEP. And in June, we have a book club that will be sponsored. So be looking for the information on those two um, uh, events that we'll be hosting. And Greg, I think you're next to put up the evaluation. Can I also say quickly, thank you, Jeanette. Yes. I wanted to say thank you also for having invited me, and thank you, Frida, for participating in the webinar. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I hope I helped someone out there with some good ideas or inspiration to keep moving forward. Thank you, Anita. Appreciate your input very much. Very inspirational. OK, thank you, everyone. So I have just uh, put up a box that says survey. I'm going to click on the browse to. And what's going to happen now is this survey will open in your own browser in a new tab. Um, and I'm doing it right now. So remember that this webinar will be available on the stemequitypipeline.org website homepage and also under the professional development heading and then under STEM Equity Pipeline archive webinars in the next few days. I just put up that short survey. Please complete this for us now. You will also be sent an email with the link into the survey in case you do not have time to fill it out now. For the archive webinar, please refer back to your registration email with the link to the survey. And this survey should also open up for you as well as these documents you can download. So thank you all. This is the end of the webinar. Thank you. Well, Greg, thank this, you, is, this is Freda. And I'm going to say one more thing. And on that survey, you're going to find the information about a certificate of completion. So if you fill that piece out, just know that it's not connected to your evaluation. So they're anonymous. I mean, you won't be. Anonymity will be. Um, you know, you're still uh, confidential is what I should say. And, uh, but then we can send you a, com a certificate of completion. So Mame and Anita and Jeanette and Greg, thank you so much for all your uh, work today. We appreciate it. it was, I just thought it was a, a good experience for us. We'll try it again. It was. All right. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.